Greetings, Chacon, thank you, Nguyen, for joining me for this special edition of Shine On with Carla Ray. With November traditionally being Native American Heritage Month in the U.S., this Shine On with Carla Ray is special, based on a divinely inspired word I received in a quiet time in the spring of 2012. I have entitled this word, A Story from Then Until Now. Recently, I went into the studio of a dear friend to record the voiceover and background music, which is a new mix of my song, Can You Hear My Heartbeat. Both the voiceover and the music coincide with the video montage and stills that we shot and edited for visual sensory perception. However, simply closing your eyes and listening to the story will allow you to see it come to life in your own imagination. I chose to wait until the time felt right to share the story, and now feels right. This story is part of how I see things. It's part of what makes me shine the way I do. I sincerely hope that this story will resonate with you and will encourage you to get in touch with the story in you that makes you shine. After all, Shine On with Carla Rae isn't about me. It's about you shining on with me. Today's episode of Shine On with Carla Rae is offered in thanks to the American Indian tribes and communities across America. I honor each American Indian family with this episode of Shine On with Carla Ray for your honor of cultural tradition, respect for our elders, and pride in honoring who we have been created to be. Further, I want to specifically thank Kenneth Littlehawk, master storyteller, gifted musician, and my dear friend one who inspired me to be all I can be, to bravely tell the stories of the culture with love, honesty, and integrity. Thank you, Kenneth, for mentoring me by your strong yet humble example. Now, let us journey together in a story from then until now. Romans 1, 19 and 20, New Living Translation. They know the truth about God because He has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature. So, they have no excuse for not knowing God. A story from then to now as given to Carla Ray. I know I may speak for myself when I declare these words, yet I am mindful I speak for many who have until now kept silent about their viewpoint on this matter. Many years ago, when this land that is now called America was simply our home, we instinctively knew it was a gift to us from our Creator God. We understood to be gifted with such an honor, we were responsible for its care. So as this lush land gave forth its bounty in fresh water, vegetation, and meat from a good hunt, we stopped each time to give thanks to our Creator for bestowing on us the fruit of His blessing. We gave thanks for the fresh, cool water that quenched our thirsts. We gave thanks for the plants that offered us food and healing. We gave thanks for the animals that provided meat for our food, hides for clothing, shelter, and skins for our drums. We used all these gifts that were given to us without waste and always offered thanksgiving and honor to our Creator for providing we lived peacefully together. We offered to Creator our thanks through our songs, dance, and playing of our instruments that we made from the bounty of the land Creator entrusted to us. Our drums were from the hides and skins of animals. Our flutes from the wood and reeds of plants and trees. Our rattles from the animal shells and horns, stones and dried corn. Our regalia our clothing, our garments, were originally made from the beloved animals that sacrificed themselves for our food and clothing. 
We made beads and necklaces from dried berries and corn, quills and shells that made our wampum. Everything adorning our regalia was an element from the bounty Creator God had given us. So in wearing these items, we gave honor and thanks to the one who gave them to us. A time came when ships came to this land carrying men and women from a different place. We sensed change in our spirits, but we had only ever known peace, so we chose to embrace the new ones. We wanted to help them to understand us and for us to understand them. However, they chose to usurp us by telling us that they alone knew the one true creator and that he was not a god of heathens they said us to be. We did not understand this God they spoke to us about, who loved us, but in loving us, we had to relinquish our culture, traditions that we had known since the beginning. After all, they even told us that all people are created in His image. In order to be part of their society, no more could we offer our prayers through song and dance or through our music. No more could we stop, kneel, and thank Creator for a good hunt. They said we were animal worshipers. Did they not know we were simply offering our thanks for the food, clothing, and shelter that had been bestowed upon us? As time went on, they began to take from us of the land, of our people, of our existence, we began to feel as though we were disappearing. We became hurt, confused, angry, and bitter. We began to be less and less accepting. Our peace was being challenged at every turn, not at all the way we were intended and created to be. In innocent trust, we allowed this to happen by allowing them to stay here. As we fast forward to this present day, not much has changed for our people. We still choose to worship and offer thanks for all the gifts Creator has given to us because we still see the beauty in nature and our surroundings and in people while the others live so fast they have no time to give thanks. We are still looked upon by many as heathens, savages, demon worshipers, and worse, by those who even call themselves after Christ. We know our God as one who created us just the way we are, one who loves us just the way we are. This Jesus, the way we understand him, is that he is as our creator God is. He came to give us life, love, peace, and sanctity. We're not so sure that those who say they know him as Lord really do know him as we do, as one who accepts us just the way we are. He does not require us to stop being who we are, to drop our culture and traditions in order to worship and honor him. Rather, he is more honored and pleased when we acknowledge him through the way we were created from the beginning. Again, I know I may speak for myself when I declare these words, yet I am mindful I speak for many who have kept silent about their viewpoint on this matter. Please, as I daily walk my prayers and pray, will you look at us through the eyes of love so we may all dwell together in unity? Now perhaps the verses from Romans will take on a whole new light. They know the truth about God because He has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power, and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing Him. We as a people do know God.
So there it is, a story from then until now, as given to Carla Ray. I sincerely hope that this story has inspired you, given you a clearer and more open perspective, and has sparked a desire in you to share your shine with the world. We all have shine, and we all need each other to share it through our life stories. Until next time, shine on.